So what is multi-user MIMO in digital communications? Well, here we've got the standard multiple input, multiple output system with a single data stream being transmitted to a single user with multiple transmit antennas. I've shown three, but there could be many more and multiple receivers. This, is, this channel is represented by a matrix H, which is each of the path gains between each of the transmit antennas and each of the receive antennas. And in the standard MIMO system with single user, then we can put a pre-processing uh, at the transmitter and post-processing at the receiver. Uh, and this is, uh, can be written as matrices. So what's the difference with multi-user MIMO? Well, in this case, uh, we th here typically we use this for a base station with multiple antennas and where the users are all separated. And you can see the similarities over here and you can see the differences. So in this case, we have three data streams going to three different users. And the users are separated, so we can't do joint processing at the users. We can do joint processing at the base station, just like we could do in standard MIMO. So let's, uh, let's write down the equations for this, for this case. So in the downlink, where we're going from the base station to the users, then the equation, I can still write these received vector here as a vector, but the important thing to remember is we can't process that this vector here all at once because it doesn't exist at the same place because it's at the different users. Each element of this vector is at a different geographical place because it's with a different user. Okay, but it equals the, if we put it in a vector, it equals the H, which is the matrix of the channel. We still have the channel matrix here, uh, times uh, in the downlink, uh, we can do pre-processing of W. So we take our data in the vector X, which is the constellation points we're transmitting from the base station, uh, the vector of them, one element for each user. And we pre-process by multiplying by our matrix W, which is our precoder. Plus, of course, there's going to be noise. So we can write it as a matrix equation, but don't forget, because each of these users is separated, we can't process Y altogether. Like we can't do a matrix operation on Y in this multi-user MIMO case. In the uplink, uh, we can do multi-user MIMO in the uplink as well, of course. And in this case, the receive vector would be at this side and then the transmit is coming from the users. And in this case, we can do the post-processing. So we can do W after we've received from our receive antennas. So this is H, X uh, plus N. So this is the difference between the downlink and the uplink in multi-user MIMO. So let's just point out a few things about multi-user MIMO. Uh, one thing is that uh, you have to um, make sure that H is invertible, just like you did for MIMO. So for the MIMO system, uh, you are trying to pick pre-processing and post-processing matrices that would effectively invert the, ma the matrix H so that the data that goes in comes out. Uh, it gets affected by the channel, of course, but if you can invert it, that's what you aim to do. Now, in a MIMO channel with lots of rich scattering, then the H matrix is going to be invertible. Uh, and that's from lots of multipath. Well, what happens if you don't have lots of multipath? Uh, let's say, for example, you had line of sight, then each of these gains is going to be very similar to all the other gains. And in that case, the channel matrix H can't be inverted. So standard MIMO does not work well in line of sight scenarios. What about when you've got multiple users? Well, if your users are separated in distance, then these antennas are going to be separated. So even if you had a line of sight, because they're going to be so much separated, H will still be able to be inverted. And that's one of the keys to multi-user MIMO in outdoor line of sight scenarios. So one thing though that you have to make sure you do there is you have to schedule the users uh, who are far apart and schedule them into the same time slots. So there's a scheduling problem. So we've got to say uh, schedule far apart users. Uh, another thing that you ha have to think about in multi-user MIMO, let's take the downlink for example, is that you need to know what the channel is 
at the transmitter on the downlink side. So you need to have sent training data from your antennas to the users. The users need to receive the training data and then they need to estimate what the channel is and feed that back to the base station before it can generate a matrix W which will invert the channel. So this requires training and needs feedback. So I'm going to write needs feedback of the training data of let's say H hat, the estimate of H. So that needs to happen on the downlink, and that's an important part of implementation of multi-user MIMO. Uh, what about on the uplink? Well, there's something you need to think about on the uplink, is that all the users need to be synchronized. On the downlink, it's fine. You generate the signals, you send them out, and even if they're received at different times at the different users, that's okay because they're processed separately. But on the uplink, the users need to start their transmissions at such a time that they will all arrive at the base station at the same time. And so if you have users who are close to the base station scheduled with users who are far away from the base station, then you need to do timing offsets so that you are going to be synchronized. So we need to write uh, here, synchronize of timing. That's an important thing for the uplink in multi-user MIMO. Uh, and also you need to synchronize the training if it's not time division duplexing. So I'm going to say uh, um, synchronize the timing and the training if it's not time division duplexing. And one of the other important things, maybe one more to mention, is that all of this is narrow band. So uh, I've uh, written these equations here, and all of these equations these, that you see here are all for a complex number, single complex number for each of these path gains, or each of these path gains by a single complex number. And that is a narrow band representation. So for uh, a, a system such as OFDM, for example, uh, which is used in modern day Wi-Fi and, uh, and 4G, 5G uh, communications, then you need so this implies that you need, and I'm, I'm going to write it, need parallel uh, implementation for each subcarrier. For each subcarrier. Uh, subcarrier in OFDM. So that's an important thing to be thinking about uh, in OFDM. Now, not all of the subcarriers will have different channels. The channel might be quite related from one subchannel to the next, um, but you need to think about this and be careful about this in your implementation of a multi-user MIMO system in OFDM. So these are the main things to be thinking about uh, and the main forms of multi-user MIMO. If you found this video useful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find it. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the website uh, in the information below for a full list of all the videos that are on the channel.